everyone for coming today to this new episode of Ash Conversations, where I'm going to be talking with the one and only electrifying man of melee, Bobby Scar, about the upcoming Smash World Tour. How are you doing today, Bobby? Having a great day, Ashcon. <laughs> How are you, my man? I'm good. You know, I've been feeling melee a lot recently, which is like something for a while that I feel I wasn't really feeling. Like, I kind of, like, went on a back burner, like, stopped doing yeah, events yeah. and going. And then for some reason in 2020, like, Melee's been kind of hitting. I don't know. Like, I think everyone's Genesis, excited. Man. <laughs> I feel like Genesis, uh, Genesis did something. Put mm -hmm. something in the water. Dude. Do you feel like it happened at around Genesis? Because I feel like I was kind of feeling the same. Um, mm -hmm. And something happened. I don't know. Genesis. <laughs> it's okay, my... My window's the same way. I hear those cars. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I would agree that like, you know, Zayn winning, seeing that kind of new storyline really kind of, when something like that happens, like new life comes. Like I remember when Plup won Genesis before, like everyone was popping off. Like the Plup Club. <laughs> the Plup Club was real. The Plup Club was taking over the world. <laughs> but you know, in recent news, we've seen some more exciting things happening, which I feel like has excited a lot of people, especially myself, um, which is we have the new introduction of the Smash World Tour. And for those of you who haven't heard it yet, big shout outs to Gimmer and the people behind Super Smash Con. They are bringing together a world tour with like 20 different events around the world. There's a point system. And it's all going to boil down to a grand finals event with 32 invited players for both Melee and Ultimate, and a total prize pool of $250,000. Which is something we've Those been, are numbers. Something we've wanted in Melee for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, the Dream of the Circuit has kind of always been, like, talked about and never happened, but the fact it's finally here for once is pretty hype. Yeah. It's hard to make these things happen, so, I mean, I'm super excited, and uh, Gimmer's back. The Gims <laughs> is back. He's been quiet for a while. Yeah, like, BTS kind of had, like, a little takeover, like, this last time. Like, VGBC, they, like, it's like there's been... Sometimes like that's how it goes, Ashkan. Yeah, sometimes that's how it goes. Competition's right? good. This is what happens almost sometimes. Sometimes you have to tech <laughs> up, right? Yeah. Cut your unit production. You know, you build the robotics bay. <laughs> sometimes that's the way it works. Then the Colossus comes out, and it's like, oh, now we got a game. <laughs> I didn't know you were a StarCraft player before. Uh, a little bit are good times but before we talk about all these new things i kind of wanted to like jump back a little bit and think about like the original like 2013 resurgence we had right like bobby scar at the front love lines, that topic hold his hands up in the air channeling the energy of that spirit bomb for melee and you're talking about on stream yeah you know i'll tell i could tell that story but i can i tell you my favorite memory i think it might be my favorite but you know, I usually just talk about the spirit bomb. Go was after Mango won, uh, I, you know, I was in the crowd. I was at the front. We were like popping off. Um, and kind of melee top eight had just ended, and I remember uh, for whatever reason, you know, I started chanting. I said it one time, and that was all it took. I was like, "One more year," and then like, fucking everybody was like, "One more year," and that was the, that was just such a sick feeling. It just felt like we worked so hard to get there and it happened and it was so sick. And it was like, I think sometimes one more year is like, uh, hey, you want to play one more? Yeah. I was like, dude, let's just play one more time. Like this, <laughs> I got to play one more game. It's the most dangerous words ever uttered in Melee. Like one, one more, more. <laughs> one more. Last one. You know, like Evo 2013 is just obviously probably most important in our current era because it was like the resurgence, like everything was like the dark ages. It's like the first tournament that I personally watched because I'm like a pseudo doc kid started in that time. And I feel like one thing that never really gets talked about that I'm like curious about your thoughts is how important do you think Nintendo like kind of canceling Melee before that tournament played into Evo 2013 being so popular? Because Absolutely. For me, like, what brought my attention to Evo was when Nintendo canceled Melee. I was like, what the hell? And then I decided to tune in after. So I feel like it's something that's never really talked about is, like, how important that one event might have actually been to the game. Yeah. Um, 
True. Yeah, if you were an evil genius mastermind, actually, now that we're talking about it, you might have planned for that to happen. <laughs> because the thing that it did was it created a story beat that reminded people, right, of mm -hmm. the fact that we, like, worked our way in. Yeah. So the risk is that this happens and no one actually knows. It's just Melee is just another game. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, I don't know if you've ever watched, like, what was the what was the game? I don't know if you're sponsored, but if you are, it's that's a problem. But uh, the game with the superheroes? Uh injustice uh, was oh, it called yeah the the mar like the the superhero fighting game right it was injustice. dc yeah injustice injustice it was called injustice yeah oh my god yeah so like <laughs> that that event at evo like i knew that it was there but it just seemed like a publicity stunt kind of thing yeah and like there's something about it that felt corporate and it felt not like important but when nintendo did that like the news that came out was it was like a customer outrage thing, and it was both about Nintendo coming in, but it was about Nintendo coming in and squashing a grassroots community of people who care. Yeah. And, like, that's exactly how I want us to be seen, to be honest. And it was all for breast cancer research, too. That's right, man. You're in a, uh, you remember Spider-Man 1? When, like, the New Yorkers come around, they throw stuff at the Goblin. They're like, uh, hey, you want to come pick on a bunch of kids? <laughs> the New Yorkers are like, fuck you. But, yeah, it's like... You know, that I feel like that event, like, just those Kotaku articles and just everything blowing up in that era, like, really brought Melee into light, and then... I agree. That even Where was, were you when the news hit? I was in class. It was my summer school at DVC. Shout-outs to DVC Rec Room. Shout-outs. Like, this was, like, my first summer there. You know, there's some good Melee history there. Like, the home of DVR. But I was there when that news hit. I remember I was talking to some someone I was sitting next to, like, played games. They're like, oh, like, why would they do that? Like, why would Nintendo do that? I was in a meeting with uh, Sony. I was in a meeting. I worked. At, I just started at Twitch. I think it was week two, and I was in a meeting about the Xbox or the uh, PS4 integration <laughs> with like Sony folks. And I think Prog messaged me or some shit, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Can I swear? Is yeah, this language you, unacceptable. Anything's okay. This is just my own chill little stream. This is my my actual candid thoughts. I'm just telling you what happened in my life. I was sitting in that meeting. I was like, oh my god, this can't be real. But yeah, that was a fucking wild event. But like, fast forward then to now, you know, like, we saw, like, what, like, we saw Apex, I think that's like another peak, like, that whole tournament was wild, and then going forward, it was we, wild. you know, we had the return of Genesis with Genesis 3, and then things were going, and we were seeing tons of tournaments, like, every region was popping off, huge majors there. And then things kind of started calming down a little bit. I feel mm -hmm. like the melee fire was still there. Maybe it was like overinflated and things calmed down, but like things eventually calmed down. And now we're seeing this new era where, you know, entrants are still high. But like, what do you think's happened kind of since that huge explosion post like Genesis 3, Genesis 4 to now? So, I mean, I think that that is what happens for what it's worth. Like, this is totally normal. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, the way that communities survive, you sometimes have people who are core members kind of leave. Some of them leave for good, but very few, if you've mm -hmm. noticed. So there's kind of this group of people where some leave and they come back and they kind of, it's a rotating door. Then you've got people who are not a core member yet, and they kind of, they come, you know, they stay for a while, but then when they're gone, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that the documentary plus Evo uh, was bringing those kinds of people in. And some of them made it all the way through and became like members and they're kind of still with us today. But a lot of them didn't. And mm -hmm. we don't have the, the problem is we don't if you call it a problem. Like the reason why I think that the numbers have gone down is we're not replacing that group of people who came in because of the documentary and because of like how strong Evo was. Mm -hmm. One thing so you kind of expect it to fall off later. Like it doesn't yeah. happen at that moment. It happens like later. Yeah. I think, like, one thing, theory I've heard, I'm kind of curious about what your thoughts is. Like, I was talking to an unnamed pro player about this, and they were saying that they think that with the rise of, like, a ton of new talent we've seen, taking out a lot of, like, the famed old names is actually almost harmful for the narratives of, like, keeping viewership up because, like, upsets feel, like, quote-unquote, like, less important because they happen more often in everything. And, like, the kings are no longer the kings, and like the gods have fallen and everything. So it's harder for people to have something to grasp to. And I'm curious, like what your thoughts on that are. 
So the way that I, okay, I usually think about things this way. So you said it and my immediate reaction was like, no, I don't agree. And then I, then I stop because I always stop. You never want to accept your first answer because it's usually biased. <laughs> so I was like, okay, why is this answer biased? And it's like, well, you know, I don't, I don't really want to think that. And I also kind of believe that new characters are important. The story can't get stale. And then I thought to myself, well, but actually, though, you kind of want to know who all the characters are. Mm -hmm. It's like difficult if you don't know who is who. And then I was then I just briefly thought like, hey, maybe it's actually our job to do a better job kind of telling the story of the people who come up. Mm -hmm. I think that I've traditionally thought about it as a commentator, as the player's responsibilities. Um, I think I've said in the past, like, you know, I'm going to do the best I can to tell your story, but if I don't know what it is, I'm going to make it up. I can't not make it up. I can't not tell a story. That's not my job. My job is to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So like, it's your job player to give me the facts so that I can tell your story in a way that is accurate and that you don't hate. Um, but then again, why should I make it all the player's job if it's true that, you know, the viewership benefits from really knowing who they are. So mm -hmm. now that I'm thinking about it, this is maybe, maybe like a good point assuming we do nothing about it yeah but you know if you look at it a different way maybe that's an opportunity and and content creators need to reach out a little bit more and mm -hmm. and i did see that you just spoke with zane um <laughs> so i mean I, some yeah. some way to get that information out to the masses yeah would probably be a lot better i think it's probably like also a pain point as a grassroots community versus like these other established esports titles is like these other big titles like riot and blizzard like there are people whose job it is to like sit day in and day out and create content to promote these storylines and to promote their games and whatnot, where melee is like probably like you're saying, like it's kind of on the player almost to like build their story and like to build their own brand and all of that. All right, Ashcon, here's what we're going to do. What? We're going to make, here's what we need to do. <laughs> oh my God. I kind of feel like I need to, <laughs> dude, if I could leave my job and just work on something like this, it would be so sick, but I don't think that I could make the money work. But we need like a melee content group mm -hmm. that, so basically you went out and you talked to Zane. We need yeah. some way to take that into something that's more digestible. And we need to be able to send it to everybody who streams and like all the big names. Uh -huh. And they need to like show this content because we're going to tell them like, hey, this is important for melee to grow overall. And that's why Mango would do it and everybody else would like actually do it. It's because they know that it's going to help melee grow. And it doesn't seem like it would be too hard to do. Like if mm. I'm Mango and I'm getting a clip and I know where I'm getting it, maybe we give it even to like his mods or whatever. <laughs> and he just plays like, all right, here's what you need to know about Melee like once a week or something. Yeah. You can get the word out. Because yeah. basically what I'm what I'm thinking is that, you know, you're doing these interviews, but how do we get that out? Yeah. This ties into the topic of the circuit as well, because right, a big part of what we all believe a circuit will do is like help us tell these stories. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we need to know who the characters are. Yeah, you know, before like the, going in the tournament. Yeah, and what their story arc is. I mean, there there are some people who are doing, like, Saved as Untitled before all the tournaments. He puts out videos, like, who's coming here, like, who to look out for, like, who's the up-and-comer. Like, the whole Melee Stats crew has been doing it, but I guess, like, trying yeah. to get, like, all this content exposed more and to make people more invested in all these up-and-coming players. Because there's some yeah. and here's the distinction, right? right now. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Here's the distinction, and this is why the point that that unnamed player brought up has a lot of merit. It's like, if you have a stagnant group of top players, then you don't need to... In other words, if you've only watched three tournaments over the last two years mm -hmm. it, and never watched any other content, you know who they are because they're the same people as they were last year and the year before that. So the insight, I think, is that uh, people who are really not watching all the content still know who the players are mm -hmm. and the thing that's great about save is untitled and you know the, uh, the other pieces of content is that you know the people who watch it are caught up but there's way more people who don't watch it than who yeah. do so the question is how do we get those things exposed to like lots of people it's like a drip mm -hmm. and then that is that's that is true and then like, right, like, like you want to hear the same sound bite at least <laughs> you know, three times for each person. And since yeah. so it's like you have to say it 10 times before everybody's heard it at least once kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then like with all of this, like leading into like the, the circuit, like what do you think the circuit means for our seed and growing it? And like, how do we, 
Like, what does this mean for the player, the average person? Like, so what a circuit? Like, what does this mean for us in your eyes? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You want me to tell you the honest answer? Go for it. The circuit is a tool that can be used intelligently or poorly. And the use of the circuit is all about the details. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just switch to Fox and then expect <laughs> to win if you suck with Fox. It's a better character than probably if you're, you know, I don't know, playing DK. But if you're good with DK and you suck with Fox, you're going to do better with DK. So it's one of those things where I think there's so many tools that are at our disposal. The question is, can we capitalize on the opportunities? Mm -hmm. And so I think it really depends on, it depends on the details. What are, uh, what are some things though? Like, like what is a good capitalization of the circuit opportunity in your eyes? Well, okay. So in, uh, you, you're asking in my eyes. So in yeah. my eyes, it always comes back to, I swear to God, dude, it comes back to like community. Mm -hmm. I want people to feel like they, I almost think of melee as this great provider of stuff. And it like gave me clarity on, you know, when I was johnning and when I wasn't, not only in the game and beyond. Uh -huh. And it helped me see what I was capable of when I was just kind of having fun, right? Like I could create YouTube videos, I could make events. Like I never did that before. Yeah. Um, it kind of, it gave me all of these things. Very importantly, like a sense of community and belonging and identity and membership and all that. And it's kind of like, I, I feel like the more that you give to the game, the more that it gives back. So I basically want all people who are exposed to melee to kind of give as much as they want so they can get as much as they need kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's the way that I think about it. And so that means that like we have to, as a community show what's valuable about melee so that people are interested and feel that sense of possibility and inspiration so that they like take those first steps or second steps or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then the question becomes, okay, how do we take the beautiful parts of the game and like blast it out there? I think that's what was so amazing about the documentary and about Evo and about that story. It's like a crystal. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like something of our essence got like blasted out to a ton of people. <laughs> and we kind of need to do that again. And the essence I feel comes from the stories mm -hmm. of the people and the human struggles first. And like, this is why I love when we talk about people's personality and then tie it to their gameplay. Like, it's just so interesting because you feel like you're getting to know who they are as a person and when you see them move in the game, it's like you get a feel for like, you know what I mean? Who they are. So it's just, yeah. it's like these weird Rocky stories where, you know, the, <laughs> like the competition kind of is like almost a metaphor. <laughs> How has your perspective on the community and the whole kind of changed since you've been doing like the reads and then the Scar and Tope show? Like, I'm Tell, sure. What do you mean? The community is, as a whole? Like, just like, how is i don't know, like have what's you, the health of it or like how have you viewed like engaging and growing the community now that you're tapping into like a market that normally was never tapped into in melee like 2013 like that just didn't exist like right i wish that i knew more about actually who it was who it was hitting to be honest like i'm not mm -hmm. sure that it's um i'm not sure that it's doing exactly what i hoped I thought that it could be like really good background content for like the Redditors. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm looking for, actually. <laughs> I think that the best piece of content would be something that can get the Redditors a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And when I say the Redditors, I don't mean like the really active people. I mean the upvoters and the downvoters, the lurkers. Mm -hmm. Trying to get to them. Yeah, because those are people who are like interested enough to spend time in yeah. that space, but who like don't know enough to upvote well. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they just they don't know enough. I I can tell from a mile away that they're not representative of like intelligent thoughts. <laughs> it's it's not not intelligent. It's just um, the first reaction is the one that tends to win, right? Remember yeah. how I said you asked me like what's the deal with the? I forget what you asked me. That 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 reaction to that top player quote. It's like uh -huh. okay, my first reaction is that they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yes, obviously. That's what my first reaction always is. I think it's what all of our first reactions always are. To those of you who are saying, no, you're wrong in response to me saying this, just consider that you're the case in point. Also, if you're a Redditor lurker watching this, uh, make sure to tune in some more Melee content. Maybe go to That's a local. Right. Uh, That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. We're here to help. This video too. Like... We're here to help. <laughs> We're here to educate you. Hey, your upvote's good. Your upvote's very valuable. It's I just important. want you to upvote the right things. <laughs> Your upvote's more powerful than you know.
So I'm not saying you don't have any power. I'm saying that you have you have a lot of power. <laughs> and I want to help, right? I want to help. I want to create content that's entertaining that those that people want to watch that helps them get a little bit deeper. That's honestly how I think about it. Mm-hmm. And so the circuit will help with that because it creates storylines, but storylines that are not tended to and stoked and cultivated where you don't know who the players are as people and it's just like numbers and names, those stories fucking suck. Do you feel like we've seen those with past circuits? Like, cause we've kind of had, we had like MLG 20, 2014 and Apex, but like, do you feel like those problems existed in the, the past ones? Yeah. Yeah. I think that maybe MLG because it was novel was a little bit more interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that they actually had like the pro bracket and amateur bracket, like there were stakes. Yeah. I thought it was a little more interesting. Um, but I don't know that it's super capitalized. Apex, I don't think really did much with the circuit. It was more just like a hype event. Like we're going to fly you out if you win. I remember like, uh, the MLG bracket was interesting. Cause like you could kind of farm like events and qualify in like not to, yeah. there's just, I'm not trying to be BM, but like there are players who were in the qualified MLG bracket who, if you tell someone, even in 2014, who they are, they'd be like, who is that? And how are they yeah. in the pro bracket? Yeah. That's why the devil's in the details. Yeah. Cause people don't like when it's not legitimate. Like I think a lot of the storyline stuff is about legitimacy. Mm-hmm. That's actually the thing that, you know, you both got to respect apex for, but also hate their guts. Uh, in that I think that Alex strife was just a marketing like he was an evil marketing whiz, right? Mm-hmm. He was, he was, he was all narrative, no fl- no stuffing, right? Like all, all icing, no cake where I think the function of the circuit is so that when he advertises his own event, he's got all this additional legitimacy by saying that this is a culmination of like a story. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter that the viewers don't know what that story is <laughs> because all he cares about is that they're watching apex, right? Yeah. And I think just on the back of marketing apex actually became the biggest smash event Mm -hmm. to to me that was one of the great lessons that i've actually learned in life not even kidding that um apex which was not the biggest tournament in the smash community just said for three years in a row that it was and then on the third year it like actually was because (laughs) for two years they said they were the biggest when they weren't it's like very effective marketing to people who don't know better right he's marketing to the people who don't know better it's, it's funny because we all like that. spent years of hearing, like, don't go to Apex, yet it just grew every single year. Exactly. Exactly. Because he didn't <laughs> care about us. We're a drop in the bucket. He was right. <laughs> he was marketing to people who didn't know, mm-hmm. oh. which is part of the opportunity that we can capitalize on, not in that way, right? Not in a self-interested way, but in a way that's really um, trying to tell people who don't know why they should care about Melee more as mm-hmm. a community. That's like the, that's the thing that, you know, that's like as a product manager or whatever, or as a strategy guy, most of my strategy has to do with like not focusing on who already likes melee because we're not the opportunity. Yeah. It's all the The opportunity is the people who don't, and we don't know them. (laughs) We know a little bit about them because we know people who have come in, in the last five, six years. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I could ask you, for example, what was it that hooked you? But it, it sounds like probably the documentary. Uh, I think what hooked me was like the community. Like, you know what it actually was? It was playing Melee with Azusa for four months and he would play Fox versus me. And Azusa is a peach main. And I was a brand new player who could barely wave dash. And he played uh-huh. with me two to three times a week for four months before I went to my first Melee tournament. And I mentioned Azusa's Fox and then everyone was confused. Yeah. Because I didn't know he was a peach main. That's actually so funny. Just, you mean at that moment you felt like that was your that was the moment? Just no, it's just like the community though, like just playing with someone consistently and everyone being so nice and like yeah, melee's just so. What sick. Did, why did you decide to play? Uh, I always wanted to get in competitive melee, but I could never find the community because it was like it was right when like it switched from Smashboards to Facebook, mm-hmm. so like I missed out on like, that era because I didn't know the Facebook events, the Facebook groups existed. I, like, remember I looked, and I think that it was either an Exodus or Genesis 2, like, happened, like, a month before I tried to find a tournament when I Googled, like, Smash Tournaments Bay Area, and I just missed it. So, like, when Evo 2013 happened, it was like, oh, like, this thing's still alive, and then 
Like I started playing, I joined NorCal Melee. Cool, and... yeah. That was a good time to, I mean, the community kind of ca- came to you. Yeah. And, and then... that's like, it, it always comes back to that, what we're talking about right now. Like we just brought it up, I think for the third time. Yeah. Right? How, how do you get the thing out to the people who, I mean, I, I love that the truth is that you already were interested. You just, yeah. you couldn't plug in, right? There was no, you had the controller, but you couldn't find the port. <laughs> But then, yeah. like, it became totally obvious where that port was. And I don't know why, like, you know, but I remember that NorCal kind of blew up in February 2013. Yeah. Janu- January 31st was the last day of the donation drive. And, like, when we got in, it was, like, announced that we were joining NCR. And then I just remember the locals started popping. And it was mm-hmm. just everything hit with that kind of synchronicity. Yeah, even BAMs were popping off. And I love BAM. Yeah. Thank you, Myung, for writing them. But anyone from NorCal knows it was like a hundred people in a venue, probably the size of my bedroom. And yeah. That's that just, that's just a statement about how sick melee was back then. Like how excited people were. <laughs> yeah. So actually, you know, in retrospect, uh, I got to think about this cause you know, we, we do have to think about how to even talk about the circuit, Yeah. but there was something about Evo being announced that I think kind of it like reactivated people who you know were kind of invested Mm -hmm. i I think there's something important about is the word that i'm going to use is um synchronicity can you define that word for our viewers at home Uh uh-huh it's um the way that i'm using it um like people feeling something similar at the same time Mm mm-hmm so like normally if we don't do anything, then people become interested in Melee and they become less interested. And it happens kind of, you know, in a in, it's like distributed normally or whatever, right? There's like each, there's no concentration. It's not pulled together. But uh-huh. these moments, it like kind of pulls that feeling yeah. together at the same time for people so they can bounce off each other. And then that's what creates like, you know, the magic. Yeah. Like so, like, what is it that's going to Genesis? Like, yeah, those moments of everyone yeah. going wild together. Yeah. So, coronavirus is not good for that. <laughs> yeah. In, in other words, for this sense of like, okay, the circuit's here. Now it's time to get to work and practice. So, like, let's all go to the next tournament, the next local. Like, that's yeah. not happening right now. So that's bad timing. That's unfortunate. We got to figure that one out. <laughs> and number two, I'm not sure if that's the vibe. Like, is that the vibe from the top players? Like, okay, or even from, like, normal players that, like, circuits announced, and so now it's time to train up so that we win or so that we do well? And it's hard to say, right? Because, like, for me, the average player, like, there's no way I'm ever making top 32 in terms of points, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But it's, like, I feel like, for me, like, what the circuit means is, like, there's a few things for where I see the pros is, like, one, it incentivizes the pro players to keep playing in a way that, before we were seeing lower attendance because like so much waiting on like MPGR, but now that that this system kind of counters the anti-attending culture that MPGR kind of created because like it in, it promotes like attending smaller tournaments because your points come from like different tiers of events, um, but it's almost like it's kind of pushing pro players to play more and then watching them play will make me want to play. Like when I watch some sick melee, I'm like wired for like a week and all I can think about is melee. It's it's kind of like that synchronicity, right? Like if we all watch some really good melee, like, I don't know, after I watch like game 10 Mango Armada, like I'm just- You're hyped. hyped. I'm hyped for like a week. Yeah, I'm thinking thinking the turn of phrase that's coming to mind is something like giving people an excuse to take it seriously again. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I think that we all know that a lot of people who show up, it might be you, but yeah. it is me. Um, we don't show up taking the game seriously. Like, we want to do well in that event, but, like, I'm not trying to get better exactly. Yeah. And I think it's really powerful for, you know, a group of people to have that motivation to take it seriously at the same time. Because, like, it's no fun to take it seriously against someone who doesn't. Melee is really hard right now, too. Like, I don't know if you've, like, played a lot recently but every now and then like when i play someone who's like a newer school player i'm just like wow it's very clear how much work they're putting into this game right now yeah they're like, good they like the way they react in certain scenarios or like they cc or some of the options they do i'm just like holy shit <laughs> i'm like sometimes maybe I that's need... a, maybe that's a way to put it too because it's like a way to how do we take it seriously without being like super nerds about it 
Or is point. that not possible? I don't know. I think Melee's at a point where you kind of, I know like, I've, I know some like fringe top 100 players who are like, it's just not worth it anymore. Like, I'm never going to get better unless I give it my all, but it's like, it's almost hard to give it your all in Melee sometimes because I like to say that Melee gives you the most life satisfaction for like the least like career development almost. Yeah. Which yeah. is like, unfortunately, yeah. in like capitalism, like something you have to care about is like your your well-being and your future but it's like well, one of the, the you know another thing that i really care about though is uh the idea of like us coming together to play to grow and not yeah. necessarily to play to win yeah and i wonder if there's something that could be done about that like kind of more intentionally talk about that kind of have people talk about how the game has like helped them in extra you know ways mm -hmm. one thing i think that's interesting is like European melee right now is more alive at the local level, I feel, than in America. Like, mm. outside of, like, a few locals in the U.S., like, the U.K. is kind of popping off, and it seems like Germany and, uh, like, Sweden are doing pretty well. And, like, I think a big part is, like, their community aspect is much stronger. Like, you go, like, I went to Fate, and Top 8 was happening, and no one was playing friendlies. But you go to, like, a U.S. tournament, and, like, people are playing friendlies, they're, like... yeah. They're less invested, and it's like hell yeah. To see, is it? It might be a. Is it a scarcity thing? Like, is it that there's fewer events and like they don't come together much, or they come together pretty often? Like, there's a bunch of great tos out there in Europe doing work, like Okamid in UK, Terra is in Sweden, and like the list goes on. Like, I just think like maybe the ability to travel is easier there. Like, just like almost the culture in Europe allows for more holiday. Like, they get more days off in a calendar year than people get, like, PTO in a year in, like, some state situations. I see. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's cool to hear, though. Yeah. But to kind of bring things back to the circuit, there is, like, some more specific things that I wanted to bring up, which is, like, one thing I found really interesting is that, like, Big House and Genesis are missing from the circuit. Mm. Which are, and, like, Shine, too. Like, these are the biggest names, almost, are missing from our smash world tour so it's like i don't know i'm just curious was, and was there just remind me was there a comment about that from i haven't seen any comment VGBC. a lot of these things are just speculatory now because like yeah it'd be cool if gimmer or apostle could do an ama about everything because i'm sure we all have a bunch of questions but i don't know, do you think that matters if our biggest events aren't part of the circuit yeah <laughs> I think, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it kind of doesn't, it kind of doesn't, I guess it matters a lot for the people where it matters. It matters more for the people who are in the scene and it matters less for that. Like Alex, uh, Alex Stripe kind of mm -hmm. crew. <clears throat> but, uh, I think it definitely matters. <clears throat> And I don't know, like, what discussions have been had or, like, what's required for joining and stuff like that or what kind of conflicts of interest exist. I really I really don't know. I would love to know. And, I, you know, I hope to see that um, – what I hope not to see is two circuits at the same time. Mm -hmm. I know that was – that's been, like, a fear that people have had in the past. That's the thing you don't want to see because that, at the end of the day, is, like, we're kind of infighting and mm -hmm. we're missing the value of – either you make both worse it's yeah. just the way that, that goes yeah there's nothing worse in esports that i've noticed especially from like the starcraft 2 era than like oversaturation like it because no one knows like we're talking about like the idea of storylines before like everyone's brains get fried because they don't know like what to follow yeah almost. you literally have two storylines so now no one can say that like zane's leading or zane took the lead or whatever you just can't make statements like that you always have to clarify like what you're talking about mm -hmm. that blows and then I think so that's what I don't want to see. <laughs> and if all of the biggest events are like in that camp, then it's like, Ooh, <clears throat> like that might suck. I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think the presence of Nintendo in the circuit in some way would be beneficial? Or do you think at this point it doesn't matter besides like a monetary, like the monetary game would be better. You think it would, it might not be. I mean, like, I love my UCF. I think we all do. Like, yeah, but do you think that they would add money is my question. Oh, I don't. 
Because like I love UCF too, and I feel like if there's no benefit. I feel like people are almost happier to see Nintendo's not part of it. I'm happier. <laughs> for what it's worth. You but know, do you... I, I just feel like we haven't really had a relationship to this point, so like mm-hmm. one thing I feel I... like we would need to start somewhere else. One thing I fear though is like so you say like this this whole notion of like, oh, we haven't had a relationship, so like why does it matter? Like it reminds me a lot about FGC and Melee, like using those words. Like, so, it's less about why does it matter. I just don't. I, I just want to clarify because yeah. it's not my intent. Because I know that yeah. it matters. Yeah. What I I finished the sentence with something that might not make sense, but uh, I I feel like it should it should start somewhere else. I see. Like, we kind of need to get to know each other a little bit, mm-hmm. earn a little bit of trust. Like yeah. I think that they need to earn our trust more than anything because it's like it's just inherently suspicious if they come in. Yeah. That, it would be hard sense. to just feel good about them being involved in like something like this now do you think like this circuit could be harmful for the idea of any kind of relationships with melee in the future in the smash scene or do you think like maybe like this could be a good thing because like maybe all the hype that gets generated in the viewership maybe you could like like nintendo of japan sees like how big this is and then they decide to finally pull the trigger because i know with like other circuits i think it was like capcom pro tour like it's like almost like it was like an American initiative. And then Japan Mm -hmm. saw it like kind of blow up. And then they're like, at first they were like hesitant and then they saw the success and then they're like, Oh, maybe this was a good idea. So yeah, maybe this could be a case of that too. Um, I think that I don't have the skills to kind of make a prediction here. I really like predicting things. (laughs) And so, um, you're aware of your power (laughs) to say things too. (laughs) I don't know if I'm aware of that. <laughs> let's, let's not go too far. You could you fix uh, a fact and then the whole world would be saying it in a week. <laughs> I feel a strong responsibility to... Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like I've played the prediction game and I like doing it, so I like to get good at it. And so I know, I think, when I'm a scrub and when I'm not. Yeah. And I think in this question, it's one of those things where ultimately it's like decided on the whims of individual people who are alive right now who i don't know you know and like Mm -hmm. they bring all of their human stuff with them Mm -hmm. i will say that like from a brand perspective and nintendo is a brand-based company um they're less likely to come on board as um a street fighter would be a capcom would be right because capcom's brand is like about fighting Mm -hmm. um whereas Nintendo's brand and even the Smash series as a whole, like it's not really that close to competition. It's just not the... Mm-hmm. It's not as obvious for them, I think. Yeah. So even if it was successful, like they may have this value of brand purity or something like that where they feel it dilutes this asset that's way more important to them than whatever success you're bringing. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, but I think it's hard to predict how they will... If they will even see it, if they will choose to respond to it, and if they do choose to respond to it, how they would respond. Because mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of incentive for companies to just outright ignore like activities of the user base that yeah. they don't want to be associated with. Like It's more trouble to acknowledge something that your customers are doing because once you demonstrate that you're aware of it, then you have to deal with it. Because it almost becomes like their responsibility, right? Like, Indeed, yeah. If Apex 2015 happened again, right, and Twitch weren't there to save the day, like, would it be like Nintendo's job to save it, for example? Um, yeah, not only point. from an optics perspective and PR perspective, but like even from legal yeah. perspective, like you don't know what laws are, you know, right? If you're running a company, Ben Goldhaber started a company called Juked, right? Yeah. Ben doesn't know the law. <laughs> So, you know, any company that's, like, playing in that space, like, you actually, as soon as you decide to care about something, like, you're, you know what I mean? You're legally, there's some legal obligations you might not even know exist. Yeah. But anyway, it's just risky to, <laughs> there's incentive to not know that your community is doing stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. I'll I also it. feel like they stepped to us once, and they got decked. <laughs> and I just don't think that it's a good PR move to come at us again. Yeah. Like, just let that one go. Yeah. My real hope is that that's the logic that some corporate strategy person is uh, following. Like, I really do hope and pray that it feels, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, I just can't even imagine a world where Nintendo, like, shuts down a tournament. I say that, but then, like, Dragon Ball Fighters had their whole 
their whole spree where it's like the animation company or something. I don't want to spread misinformation, but someone was telling them like, oh, you can't run these tournaments. Yeah. We would have to, if that ever happens though, you know, we need to spin that story. Yes. Actually, I almost feel like we all, we need a, we need it like in reserve. We need it for the Smash World Tour finals. It's actually not a terrible idea, dude. So the, we're coming up with good ideas. I, I really do wish that I had the time to just like be the, Maybe you that's know, why they world. use the name, like Smash World Tour. Like that's asking for like a takedown, you know. Super Smash Con. It's like maybe they're onto something here. Just use the most aggressive name so you can run the story of a century when you get shut down. <laughs> but um, one other thing that for me I find a little scary about the whole circuit is the amount of money in it, and it's like where the hell is this money coming from? Like, is money a good thing? You know, like, is our short burst better or is smaller amounts of sustainable income better for players? Like, how does this impact our scene on a whole? Like, one year we have a $250,000 circuit. The next we have zero, zero dollars. Like, what happens to the players who took the game more seriously? Like, or should we just not care as long as the checks cash? Man, These are all good questions, Ashkan. Some, I, th I think they're a little difficult to answer, actually, because it's... Yeah. Um, let me think where to start we could break it down in to... general in general money is a good thing yeah money coming in is a good thing um when money comes in there's like two ways for it to be bad <laughs> one is if it's um if it's dumb money and we get a reputation you know, from outside investors as like not a worthwhile investment. Um, it's questionable, you know, in other words, that that's also a little bit nuanced where if you're trying to act in good faith, that's one yeah. thing, but also sometimes people come to us in bad faith and then, you know, yeah. or like not really with a good idea. Yeah. So it's like, it depends on where the blame is. If the blame is on our side, that's bad. Um, and then, you know, you're kind of asking the, the question of how could it be optimally efficiently used? And unfortunately, I don't think that that's really like a known thing, kind of. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to say something, but I don't want it to sound mean because it's not mean. It's like the wrong way to think about it. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean, you can't move dollars here into dollars there. They're not fungible. Like in our minds, it makes sense. Okay, there's 250, 250 G's on the table. Like, how are we going to use it? Yeah. That's not true. Right? We have 250 G's for this event. Take it or yeah. leave it. We can't say, okay, we're going to take this money and then invest half of it into our future, unfortunately. But yeah. that would be yeah. much more wise. And so, you know, the, the, the number is usually just a marketing thing, and that's good to an extent. But to your point, it does also kind of, you know, <laughs> it like makes the sequel real bad. Or it's like in movie one, we kind of save the world. And then in movie two, it's like we're making ourselves a sandwich. And it's like, well, where are the stakes? Where are the stakes in this movie? I mean, esports has always kind of been propagated on fun money. Like before, it was just kids with trust funds. Almost now, it's like the trust funds themselves are invested. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, in general, I think that money is good. Um, I wish that we could choose how to invest it because I yeah. think that we could, like, invest money into really intelligent areas that would be very fruitful for, you know, our kind of long term. Yeah. Um, how do we make them? I guess the way that I would ask the question is how do we make the most with what we have and hopefully if we are good business partners for somebody right how can we really invest in that relationship and kind of you know if you put in 250 and you know you got it back maybe next time put in 500 yeah what do you think See what we could do with that what do you think happens if uh i'm not saying like this is true but like what do you think happens if like the money doesn't exist like if the circuit goes defunct finals happen and it's like uh was it like pound pound four pound five all over oh again? that's that's that would be very bad yeah that would be very bad gimmer and vg Bootcamp would go down in infamy that would be really bad i don't think that will happen number one failure like grind pr that's worse <laughs> than grind pr right because that's that's damages to the yeah. that damages to the thing itself right that yeah. the essence we were talking about like you're hurting the essence at yeah. that point and people will not i mean people like me will not take kindly to that people yeah. who make their earn their living off this game will not take kindly to that do you think do you think it's bad though like the whole idea of like oh the sandwich like oh the money doesn't come back the next year like we just have this one big blowout and then 
they always just kind of back to its old state that it was before. Okay, so that's like a different question, right? Because yeah. question one is what if yeah, we don't even pay out? Yeah. And then question two <laughs> is um, that's an absurd scenario. We, have... we probably shouldn't even entertain because I don't narrative. think that'll happen. I trust Gimmer <laughs> with the the essence. Um, yeah, if next year is not as big, then eh, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Hopefully we've brought new attention in. I mean, that would be the best, uh -huh. but you know, it's definitely true that, right. It's kind of that replacement rate thing where we can think that as soon as we were out of Evo, then our numbers drop. But like really what was happening is those Evos were replacing the community with more people mm -hmm. who never stuck around, you know, many of whom never stuck around in the first place. So it's yeah. like, it's not, so we're going to get another inflation, and the question is how many of them can we keep? And then maybe we have another one next year, maybe we don't, but that kind of... Uh, I guess the way that I'm trying to put it is that each time we have a big thing like this, it's an opportunity, and the question is whether we capitalize on it. Yeah. Getting two opportunities is better for us than one. Yeah. I Getting agree. one is better than zero. Getting too many is bad, though like six circuits yeah having <laughs> having two bets on the table at the same remember that did i ever tell a story about mango on my my bachelor party at the craps table i, did I definitely not. did but uh I've, I've not heard this one though he was in some kind of way it's a very long story but the end of the story is that you know i'm watching mango bet he was about to get kicked off the table and he like put uh, a bunch of chips on red not realizing he had already put a bunch of chips on black <laughs> So he had a bunch of chips on both black and red. Oh god. Luckily it did not turn out green. But the point is, that's a dumb move. Don't do that. It's like bad. <laughs> it is bad. Let's bet on one yeah. of red or black and not on both. Yeah. <laughs> that's some classic Vega right there. Yeah. We'll make one bet, we'll calm down, we'll see what happened, and we'll make another bet. That's mm. the way to do it. <laughs> I'm really hoping that this will be a good year for Melee, though. Yeah, I think that it, I think it will. I ha, I got a feeling that it will. Mm -hmm. As long as Corona doesn't kill a top player or something, or anyone yeah, in our which seems no which is pretty unlikely. That yeah. probably won't happen. Which is great. <laughs> Very happy that you know yeah. with some of the details of how it's playing out. But um, it's not good for attendance in the short and medium term for sure. And it's in my mind really unfortunate that. Like when an announcement like the circuit comes out, it's great if that synchronicity of the energy and attention can go somewhere. Like yeah. we want it to go somewhere, and I don't know where it's going right now. Yeah, I think it like shot up, and then now everyone's just like a little, a little afraid. I know like events, some events are getting canceled, like the ones that are mostly like taking place on like college universities because mm -hmm. those like their campuses are just shutting down. But I know like CEO is still going, and I imagine the CEO Dreamline still going. I imagine that Pound will still go on. So hopefully our community can be safe and smart and we yeah. can still prosper in this time. Yeah. I, I, and I think that I think it'll be fine. <laughs> um, but I hope that we do like another story beat or whatever um, after like locals and regionals yeah. start to get into higher gear. Mm -hmm. I agree. Cause I it's, think that's the real challenge here. It's keeping the traction of the circuit alive. I feel like thunder thunder gaming had like a circuit or something in SoCal and just like, I remember it was 2GG. I forgot who it was. They announced like some world championship and we all just kind of forgot about it after a while. And it's like, what happened? So like keeping, keeping it alive is important, but they have so mm -hmm. many big events on board all around the world that I think I trust them. VGBC is good at putting out the content. Gamer has his, his brain. Yeah. He's got a brain for sure. He's got a good brain for keeping people interested, but, um, yeah, that's that's about it for all the things I wanted to talk about. Dope. Any closing? Yeah, I think yet? that if we can, the better he can. I think the more that Gimmer can realize, and everyone can realize that, um, it's not about what we individually do ever. It's like about how well we work together. Mm -hmm. The better things will be. Because like Gimmer being as smart as possible is actually not that helpful because he only reaches a limited number of people. Like he needs everyone to. You know, he needs like the top players to put out little feelers. Like he needs the community. He needs it to be an alive discussion. Mm -hmm. And that's when he's like a genius is when he realizes that it's not about what he does, but what if 
he allows others to do or enables others to do. Yeah. That's like vacuous leadership. I'm all about it. <laughs> right? Like you're just a big empty space. Yeah. I don't, I think the Gimmer, that's one of Gimmer's weaknesses is that he's, he's not vacuous. <laughs> There's Gimmer in there. He might shoulder too, the BGBC might shoulder too much of it. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we won't spontaneously like create good content around it and that it won't have the same net effect, but. <laughs> but yeah. Thanks so much for joining me today, Scar. Some good yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah. I think I'm going to stop the VOD recording and then open up the some questions to chat for like about Dope. 10 minutes. So chat if you have any questions and to those on YouTube watching at home. Thanks so much for joining us.